Hi all you fragrance lovers out there. Welcome to the Honest Perfume Reviewer channel. This is Kiki from Sweden and today I thought I'd share with you a category in my collection. Um, I haven't, you know, I don't have a huge collection. I try to keep it under 50 bottles but they're in like in constant rotation. But I do have three bottles that I consider vintage. Um, they are not actually from uh, I don't, I mean none of these are like 30, 40, 50 years old but the fragrances uh, came out a long, long time ago, and I think the, I have like re, they might have been reformulated, but they very much remind me of the way they smelled back in the day, like when I was young. And I had all of these, or I had two of them when I was young. The third I have now acquired later in life, but it belongs to the same category, and I'll tell you what um, what's similar in all three of them. And I've spoken about this one before on my channel. It's Safari by Ralph Lauren. It, this was kind of my first real love. Uh, it wasn't my first fragrance ever, but it was the first one that I felt, oh boy, this is me. I want to smell like this, and I want to smell like this every day. <laughs> I no longer feel that way, because now I've been on a, like a super duper fragrance journey for the last like three years, uh, and I've learned a lot, and life is way too short to just wear one fragrance or even 10 fragrances. I have right now like 120 different fragrances. Most of them are uh, decancer samples, but I have 49 full bottles. But this one I wear every now and again. Uh, it's really powdery, it's floral, it has woodsy notes, um, and it has like that typical base that all of these three that I'm going to tell you about have that has like sandalwood, patchouli, um, let's see, what else is it's typical for this era? They have sandalwood, uh, sandalwood patchouli, amber, cedar, um, and they all have kind of that same... <laughs> Uh, some of them have oak moss, this, not this one in particular, and then they have like loads of floral notes and also like in the top they have fruity notes and some citruses. Uh, this one also features the note of galbanum which gives it a very green and a little bit bitter twist, um, which has actually become, I didn't know it back at the, in the day because I used to think of perfumes either they're good or bad. Now I really know why I like a certain perfume, but this one has um, that note of galbanum which I have really grown to uh, love and also, you know, be able to identify. It's um, a keynote in uh, number 19 Poudre from Chanel. It's also an, in Dajala from Zerjoff that I really, really appreciate. And I find it, I keep returning to perfumes that have this note. And I think it helps to make a fragrance not too sweet. Um, that's what the function. I think it really, it's not the note in itself. It's kind of a, um, a supporting kind of uh, note in perfume composition. This is my analysis, and of course I am an amateur so far, but that, that's, my, um, that's my take on Galbanum's kind of um, role in perfumery. Uh, so I wear this like, I can wear this any time of day, but I think it really works like for a formal dinner, um, a night out. I always get compliments for this, and the performance is incredible, which I find is actually a lot of fragrances were back in the day. And I think maybe it is because of that base, because it has both like amber, patchouli, um, and, and woodsy notes like sandalwood, cedarwood uh, in the base, which kind of is a fixative uh, and makes them last longer. Um, so if you are not a fan of patchouli, this might be a little bit difficult, but the way they always use uh, patchouli to create this kind of performance. Um, I'm not 100% sure that this is the reason, but I, someone told me that, and I think it kind of makes sense. And the patchouli, there's not enough to like, it can't be called a patchouli fragrance, but it for sure is in here and uh, plays an important part. Okay, so the second one that I have, I, I actually swapped this a few years ago. Uh, it's Boucheron. Uh, pour, I think it's called Boucheron Boucheron, and it's the EDT version. And this is a 2003. Um, let's see, or is it, thir does it say 13? It might be from 2013. I think that sounds more reasonable. 2013. Uh, it has been stored well in the dark in, uh, in a dry place because it's absolutely perfect smelling. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and some people might wonder, you know, how long does a perfume last? And it really depends. Uh, sunlight is the worst, or like heat. Um, I mean, it's not going to go bad 10 minutes in the sun, but if it's like a whole season, it's kind of in a sunny room and the, the sun is hitting your collection, that is not a good thing. Okay, so this one is um, kind of in the same ballpark as Safari, but it's not... It doesn't have that powderiness. It's more of a transparent uh, fragrance. It's like a whole bouquet of flowers with that typical 19 or late 80s, early 90s kind of base with patchouli, different kinds of woods and amber. 
and then it has like so many floral notes listed, so many citruses listed and fruits. Uh, and it kind of is a little bit challenging in the, the beginning. I think maybe it's the civet and it also has tonka, so it's quite deep. And then when it dries down, it becomes a little bit more uh, of an easy wear, kind of vanillic tone. And I think even a person today um, that is not like my age might appreciate it. But they'd have to get through the dry down, which might remind them of their grandmother or their mother. Um, I, have, I have it all on my, on my, the, in my inner arms on both sides. And I sprayed it um, like a good half hour ago. And it is really, really beautiful, very feminine. Um, for me, of course, this is mainly, maybe, well, at least I can't separate the fact of that I appreciate the nostalgic feeling that I get when I sniff this. This like brings me back to my early uh, adulthood years, like when I was in my, te my teenage years and early 20s, I would say. Um, and it just, I don't know, I just, I, I had no words to describe what I thought about the fragrance then. Um, and now that I have the words to describe, but it's really hard because I'm, I have that association from back then. I just found that it's really, it made me feel really like dressy, feminine, uh, looking good, smelling good. And it, it the, the smell kind of sticks with you all night, kind of giving you wafts of your own fragrance kind of coming back at you. And I really like that. I appreciate uh, perfume with a good performance. Uh, I recently um, shared some of this with my mother-in-law. She didn't like it at all. She thought it was quite horrible and not fresh, and I don't know what it was. But she's from a different generation. Maybe she uh, she kind of missed the um, the high the high days of when this was popular. I don't know. Um, but I really like it. And if you're into like classic fragrances, and you might if you, and you like Safari, maybe try this because I think it is. Uh, really nice fragrance. Uh, it has like, I mean, like orange flower and other white florals notes. Um, and I think it's quite likable. If you can get past maybe the, fi the first five or 10 minutes, which might feel like a little bit dated or a like a little bit for an older person, perhaps. Okay, and so the third one in this little um, category of my collection is, I have made a separate video of this. It's called uh, 24 Faburg, and it is from Hermes. And this is a new acquaintance of mine, uh, even though I find it an old fragrance. I think it came out like, I mean, decades ago, for sure. This particular version is made by a different perfumer than back then, so I don't know exactly how similar they are, but I can place it in the category with these two others that I just mentioned for sure, and it also reminds me of one of my, I think it was my, one of my very first fragrances, Private Collection by Estee Lauder, um, which I'm kind of always on the lookout for a bottle of it, because it was discontinued just like three years ago or two years ago, and I was thinking about getting a bottle, and then when I finally went back to get a bottle, it was gone. And that fragrance is really, really green, and I think it has the note of galbanum, I'm not sure, but some other green notes as well, like a little herbal. This one, is a little bit more of a, it's like orange flower, uh, vanilla, I think it has orris, it has all kinds of, I think there's a few fruity notes on the top, it has that typical note structure, and, and back in those days they also used to list like all the notes, I don't know if it's all the notes, but very many notes compared to like niche fragrances the way they're marketed today, you only get like three top notes, three mid and three base, although of course there's much more to them. And I don't know if it's they don't want to give away too much of their, you know, secret recipe or or if they just want to it make it easier for people to remember them or what it is. And there are even houses that don't list notes at all, like Orto Parisi. Uh, there are notes, there are fragrance houses that only give you like four notes and don't even divide them up into the, you know, top, middle and bottom like Perfumum Roma. Um, I really appreciate getting a note pyramid so that I can kind of like use my nose and hunt for uh, the different notes. Um, I appreciate that. I, I forgot to mention one note that might make this one a little bit more of a challenge and it has civet. And civet is uh, an animalic note uh, that everyone might, it might be a little bit of an acquired taste. And it also has like a resin in here from this herbal plant and it's called afuteda or something like that. Uh, and the smell of it, it also sometimes is called stinking gum. <laughs> uh, so th it might explain why this is not like a love at first sniff for everybody in 2022. I think that um, 
uh, for us, for those of us who are a little bit older, we might appreciate just, you know, like remembering fragrances like these. I don't think I can, I'm gonna try it on my daughter who's 18 and to see if she would even, you know, put this on. I can imagine not. Uh, and I'll have to say about these fragrances, uh, one thing that is a problem is that the opening is usually a little bit of a challenge and then it turns into something else 15 or 20 minutes later. And very much so with this Safari. It is a challenge, like if I just sniff the top, it's really sharp. And that sharpness, it takes a good 20 to 30 minutes until it kind of like reaches its, uh, its peak, I would say, like when it's at, at its very best. Um, and then it lasts all day long and it's just unbelievably great and it projects and you can smell it yourself and it's just, I, I love this. I'll always have this in my collection. This you can still find. The other two you can also still find. Uh, the Bouchenon comes in an EDT and an EDP version. I have tried the EDP as well. Um, I think I have. I can't quite remember. I couldn't tell you the differences. I have tried the EDT. This is the EDP. Let me see in just a minute, let me check that. Yeah, this is EDP. I've tried the EDT as well, and they're, it's also quite wonderful. And I, I think if I was standing side by side uh, and having to choose, I've actually swapped both of these. Uh, this one I bought uh, online because they don't have it like at your local store anymore because it's been out so long, but you can definitely find it. And you can find really good deals on it too. So it's not that pricey. I have also tried this in a parfum uh, concentration and it's really similar. Uh, I'm wondering if it's maybe, it might be identical. They just put it in this little tiny bottle and called it Parfum. It's really, really similar, uh, especially in the dry down. Maybe there's a difference in the beginning, but I think the performance of this is fantastic. And I really know I have no need. I just bought it because I was curious about if there was a huge difference. Um, anyway, those were my uh, thoughts on these vintage fragrances. And I was happy to see that actually people are still reviewing them. Uh, young people and appreciating these and I'll tell you one little fact about this fragrance this was a favorite of a very famous um, I think she was Mexican a really famous singer her name was Selena something Selena I mean with an S-E-L-E-N-A and this she would bathe in this and this was like her, her very favorite perfume um, and she started wearing this when she was 18 so that gives you an idea about uh, it is not a grandma fragrance. It was just what was popular back then. And I think she died like when she was 24, someone murdered her. Um, I'm not quite sure of the story. I, I have to look into this person because I guess she was really big stuff in Latin America. Anyway, um, I recommend uh, that you get your nose on those. Bye for now.